In this tutorial, I'll show you how to properly do a guitar hammer-on and a pull-off. Guitar slurring techniques like hammer-ons and pull-offs can be really tricky, and if we don't learn the foundational principles for how to do them properly, then our hammer-on and pull-off guitar technique will sound thin and weak, and that will affect the music that we're trying to make. For example, most guitarists are doing pull-offs wrong unless they've intentionally worked on this, so I think this is really going to help out your playing so you can get a clean and clear guitar hammer on and pull off technique under your belt by the way this is a little clip from my guitar technique course called top notch technique i'm just excited about the course because i just finished filming it last week so i wanted to share this little piece of it with you for free so i can help you out with your hammer ons and pull offs on the guitar here's the lesson so for hammer ons that's what we're going to do first here you don't want to wind up for it you know we, we would think of like oh we need to like get get a really big uh, distance and go in on it. That's gonna make it be less accurate. We actually want to try to just use speed and be super close and just snap down on it. So snap down on it quickly. It's about speed, not distance, and not even necessarily about force. If you can just be close and just snap down on it quickly, you're gonna get a really nice tone. And very important because you're gonna be snapping down on it. We don't want to hold extra pressure once we're on on the string, right? Once you're on the string, just want to have the amount of pressure we need. So a hammer on should produce a full sound, like as full as if we plucked it with the note, with our pick or finger, or whatever. And so it's a good benchmark to be thinking of. It shouldn't be a weaker sound just because it's a, a hammer on. It should be a full sound. The tone and the timbre will be different. That's the point of it. It sounds more kind of fluid and connected. The tone and the, the timbre will be different, but it shouldn't significantly sound weaker or lighter. I'm pretty close to the fretboard. I'll try to angle it this way for you. Right? And if I pluck, notice how the hammer on is not weaker. It just has this kind of the slur quality to it. So. So pull off, similarly, we want to be very intentional with. Pull off is even more tricky, okay? The biggest thing about pull off is snapping down. So you don't lift off, okay? You don't lift off. If you lift off, this is what most people do with the pull off. They're literally just lifting off. But you want to pluck it. You want to snap down. So the next string kind of catches you. You're plucking it. So all of the stuff about right hand plucking, well, it's kind of like all of those principles, but with the left hand, right? You're plucking, getting a nice, warm, plucked sound. And even with the pinky, do we think of it as that weaker finger? It is the weaker finger. Can we get a warm, plucked sound? Notice how different that is than this. That is the kind of default haphazard pull off. We don't want that, we want this. Huge difference, huge difference. So that's that kind of A-B test for yourself too, to try to do a bad one on purpose and then compare it. So you are plucking with your left hand. The next string is, a, is like a net that catches it and you bounce right back off. You go back to the ready position. Then it hits the next string and just bounces right back off. So don't do this and then stay there. So don't, don't hold on to that, right? You're gonna go, it hits that string and then bounces back off. Um, and you're re immediately releasing the finger tension. As soon as you don't need the tension that is necessary, you try to let it go. So doing it quickly is very important. The speed is what makes the sound. Snap your finger down and spring it back into motion. The finger should bounce back up on its own from you relaxing. You don't pull it up, right? So the other string kind of lets it bounce off. It pushes it a little bit. You're not pulling. You're not using your muscle to pull it back up. And just this finger two to one pull off. Okay, it's, it's, notice it's going, it's very subtle, but I'm pulling down, I'm plucking downward this way. Okay, plucking downward, and then it's touching this string and bouncing right back off to the ready position. Versus, that's me just lifting off. World of a difference. Nice, like awesome, robust plucking sound. So if you haven't done pull-offs that way and you do a pull-off exercise and you try to do them all that way, it is an intense workout. This is one of those, t there's gonna be exercises for hammer-ons and pull-offs. You wanna just be super careful with these. You'll get an amazing, clean, clear pull-off sound if you work on this, but you just have to be careful if you haven't done it that way. It tires the hand out 
pretty significantly. Well, I hope you found that helpful and that there's a little takeaway for you there to really help out your guitar technique. Probably the idea of pulling downward, plucking, snapping down for the pull-offs to get a really clean and clear and crisp pull-off instead of lifting off, which is what so many of us are doing until we learn how to actually pluck with our left hand. If technique is a challenge for you, if you're wanting to improve your overall dexterity and just facility to make anything you want to play easier, I have a really great guitar technique warm-up exercise this is what I think is the best guitar technique exercise that I use as a warm-up and I use to work on my technique all the time and I have a free PDF of it with notation and tabs that you can download totally for free just use the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash warm-up another very common problem with general technique that most guitarists are struggling with is keeping our fingers close to the fretboard we often have our fingers and definitely our pinky kind of flying way off the fretboard and coming back instead of keeping it contained and close to the fretboard. I have a lesson all about exactly how to work on that that I highly recommend watching next. There will be a link on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube, or you can find the link in the description about how to keep our fingers close to the fretboard and keep our pinky from flying way off when we're playing, which helps us play way cleaner and way more smooth and with more control. I post a new lesson video every single week. Next week's lesson is on how to get started playing octaves on the guitar, which is a really cool sound. Hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.